Okay, now we're gonna bring up our first comic. Now this is a big, this is a big moment. Yes, your brother. <laughs> I'm sorry. Can I not do this? No, no brilliant. You know, I told you an hour ago that you're a microphone whore, and there's no way you're not going to try to take over my show. I love you. And seduce me later. <laughs> not really sure where. The, uh, hey, there he is. we're open-minded here. Some more open than others. I'm looking at you, Chris. All right, so it's our first comic on our first open mic night, and it's his first time to do comedy. So a round of applause for Raymond Weaver. Right, 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 right. Get him, man. Right, right, right. I did that already. Good evening. Hey, good evening. Hi. How y'all doing? Okay. My name is Raymond Weaver, as he uh, already demonstrated. And uh, yeah, he's my older brother, so don't hold that against me. You can hold other things against me. When I was a kid, uh, I went by Ray. It was a simple non-choice of my own. People would say Ray, and I would look. And when I got older, I realize that, especially in a club, it's hard to hear, and Ray sounds like J or Day or Hey. Or... So I thought as a, yeah, as a, um, a smart move, I thought we'd just go and start calling myself Raymond. And for a majority of my friends, this was a seamless transition. But what I found is that for some reason in my 20s, I must have had a speech impediment. And uh, so Raymond would be interpreted as Randall, Brandon. He's doing, that's pretty close. And it didn't really bother me that much. But then I had a whole slew. That's a lot for idiots. Um, I'd say Raymond, and they go, Raven? That's so Raven. It's, yeah, it was a real common name back then if you were a comic book hero, and I wasn't, and it just kept happening, and I normally would just blow it off, no, I don't really care, you know, what's in a name, but then after a while I started to get irritated, I mean, how about 15 times in about a year and a half, and how many times could you make that many mistakes saying your own name, I don't think that many, well, it was probably when I was like 23 or 4, and I was in a club in Dallas, and I go up and start, you know, it's hard enough to walk up and talk to a girl. Unless you're uber wealthy and you just climbed out of a Lamborghini or something. And I walk up, hey, how you doing? Oh, great. What's your name? Oh, my name's Christina. Hi, Christina. My name is Raymond. Raven? As if she really hoped it was. <laughs> and then I did this. I went, who sent you? <laughs> It really didn't get the desired effect I had hoped for. <laughs> Except I didn't have to buy her a drink before she made up an excuse to walk away. But you know, it is what it is. And as I said, you know, I, I grew up in Duncan with Lee and currently living there living there now, but I just moved from Austin, Texas, and uh, I mean, Austin's awesome, it really is. I, I miss my friends, of course. I miss the great restaurants, the, uh, the Alamo Draft House, the greatest movie theater in the history of movie theaters. I don't miss the traffic, even a little bit. Traffic sucks. But it took me a little while before I realized I was going to miss one thing in particular, and that is the, the Chronicle, the weekly entertainment rag. And uh, I mean, I would, I'd be jonesing for it by Tuesday when it comes out on Thursday. And I'd get up in the morning, drink some coffee, and take the dog on a walk around the block, stop at the corner store, get my new copy of the Chronicle, take it home, smoke a bunch of weed, and then read it cover to cover. And generally, back to front. Don't ask me why. Just my way of doing things. And the Chronicle is a great way to show the demographic of Austin. 
I mean, there's ads ranging from everything, from a concealed carry class, you know, it's Texas, so the people got guns. And uh, there's a, one particular ad I really liked. It said, speak Spanish now. Now granted, if I looked at it and I said, habla usted español ahora, I wouldn't need the class. But, yeah, I guess they had their business. But if there's anything that for sure tells you what Austin are, it's the alarming number of massage therapy. People that know how to do it, people that need to learn how to do it, people who need to tell him to stop doing that. <laughs> and, I mean, just tons of that, just so many massage therapists. And the places I like to go were like the Green Belt and the Hike and Bike Trail and Martin Springs Pool, really fun places, and you run into Tons of massage therapists. I mean, they're everywhere. And the conversation was always the same. And, and I granted I wasn't approaching guys for this, just my own way of being. But you walk up to you know an attractive girl, hey, how you doing? Hey, hey. What's your name? Earthbound sunflower. <laughs> uh, yeah. So what do you do, earthbound? Um, I'm a massage therapist. So where do you work? Oh, I work at Whole Foods. <laughs> Nailed it. No, really, it's funny. I mean, and, and you can't be a jerk, you know. And you got to give an open mind. So you say something like, "So you have a massage chair at Whole Foods, and, and that's what you do." And they go, "Oh no, I'm a cashier, but my passion is massage therapy." Well. She starts talking about things like chakras and stuff, and I zone out and just nod and smile and listen to her talk about chakras and healing, because it's her passion. And I began to think, man, I'm being kind of a dick. You know, I shouldn't judge her. I mean, there's people that have kind of jobs that do everything. There are people that look for Bigfoot. There are people who look for ghosts. I told you. I told you. Well... I don't watch those shows on those channels because I find them to be insipid, which is stupid. But I've been tricked a couple of times into seeing the dramatization version of ghost shows. It's like late at night, you're drunk, you're channel surfing, and all of a sudden, hey, attractive woman on a couch, <laughs> reading a book, soft glow of the television set off to the side. Suddenly, unexplained noise outside the TV. Right then you establish, she's already off the market. <laughs> that sucks. I'll watch it anyway. Maybe it's a slasher film and she's about to get killed. No reply. A few seconds go by and then unexplained sound offset. Bam! Mark, is that you? Stop doing that. That's scary. Mark doesn't answer. It's usually about this time in the show that they cut to the person that the person's actually being haunted. That person isn't nearly as attractive as the person that is in the dramatization by any measure. Now that may sound mean, it's just true, okay? So, this led me to a theory. And here's the theory. Attractive people do not get haunted. Mm -hmm. Yeah, follow me through this. For one thing, at some point in this show, some expert's gonna come in, they're gonna tell you, oh, the, this place is haunted by a restless spirit. Or, you know, your house is built on a burial ground. Something really bad. So the ghost can't leave. He's stuck there. So why is he gonna spend eternity with someone that isn't good to look at, at least for a little while? So, and don't take this to heart, but if you happen to move into a place and you begin to think that it's haunted, don't be afraid. You should just be insulted. <laughs> don't call a priest. Call a personal trainer or maybe a plastic surgeon. Because either that or you gotta move. You, there's really nothing I can do to help someone at that point. But all this thought's going through my head while I'm talking to Earthbound or listening to her. And, um, I began to realize that she's talking a lot and this is going nowhere. 
I need to go walk the dog or do what the hell I was doing. So I, I said, hey, Earthbound, thanks. And it's been it's really, really nice talking to you. And she, of course, says, have a very blessed day. <laughs> Which is like code for please let me give you a massage. But I just turn, hey, see you later. I start to walk off. And she says, hey, hey, I didn't catch your name. I said, Raven. <laughs> and she says, no, I don't see that. Thanks, guys. Raymond Weaver, who really, really needs to seize the opportunity for a stage name. And we all know it will be Raven. <laughs>